Ever before AI became the buzzword it is today, there was another term that dominated headlines, and that was big data. It was everywhere. Conference panels, LinkedIn polls, startup pitches, you just couldn't scroll three inches without someone claiming they were leveraging big data. But lately, it feels like the buzzword had died down, like big data quietly slipped out the back door while AI took the center stage. But here's the truth, big data didn't even disappear, not at all, in fact, it's now more important than ever before because it's the fuel behind your AI model and we use big data to train our models. Yet, for all the hype over the years, most of us are still asking the question, what even is big data? How do we collect this large amount of data? And what does it mean for us now that it's powering the brains of modern technology? What I'm going to be doing in today's video is to break down big data in a way that finally makes sense. No jargon, no buzzwords, just real talk about how we got here, what it means, and why it matters. Let's get into it. Just like every other thing, we're going to be starting with a problem. And the problem was the explosion of information. Imagine this, you try to walk into your kitchen and suddenly every single object you've ever used, like the spoons, every mug, every snack wrapper, has been duplicated a thousand times. They're all piled up, unorganized, and growing by the second. Now imagine someone says, hey, can you find your favorite coffee mug? That's kind of what the internet and the reward is dealing with right now. We are creating more data than ever before. Every Google search, every Uber ride, every swipe on a dating app, every sensor of a smart thermostat, even your fridge might be generating data. In fact, we are producing more data every two days now than we did in all of human history up until 2003. That's insane. And the question is, what do we do with all of this data? Let me try to break this down. What exactly is big data? Let's start very simple. Big data is just a lot of data, like a lot of data. But it's not just about size. What really makes it big is that it's too large or too complex for traditional tools like Excel or basic databases to handle efficiently. Big data has three main qualities, and this is where we introduce the famous three Vs. The first V is volume, and by volume, I mean just how much data we're talking about. We're talking about terabyte, petabyte, exabyte, or just any other metric you want to use to explain this. The second V is velocity, how fast it's coming in. Think about real time streaming from sensors or social media. And the last V is variety. It's not just about numbers in spreadsheets, it's images, videos, tweets, GPS signals, audios, even emojis. And guess what? Over time, people started adding more Vs, like veracity, can we trust this data? And value, is it useful? And there are a lot of Vs that have been added, but just to keep it simple, let's stick with the three main Vs. I know what I've been talking about appear to be too many explanations. I'm going to help you. Let's look at a reward scenario here. Imagine a giant shopping mall. There are security cameras in every corner, people swiping cards, customers tweeting about their experiences, Wi-Fi trying to track where the folks walk, and even thermostats adjusting based on crowd size. One thing you notice quickly from the mall is that it is constantly collecting data from everywhere. But it's messy, it's unorganized, and in different formats. Now, put yourself in the position that you are the security chief and you are told, tell us what time the store was busiest, who spent the most money and how many people checked in into the food court in the last 24 hours. You can't just sit and rewatch all the footage or go through receipts one by one. You need tools and techniques to analyze this massive chaos in real time. That's exactly what big data is trying to tackle. But think about it on a very global scale. But big data is hot, companies spend large amounts of money for it and they try to get as much as they can. Let's look at how companies actually work with big data and try to get value from it. Well, there's a whole tech ecosystem built around it. Here's the basic big data pipeline that you could have and you could have more complex pipeline and architecture. This is just the basic to introduce you to how companies work with big data. First is to collect from sensors, apps, websites, social media, just you name them. 
The next, after collecting this big data, they store the data. And it's mostly stored in distributed databases that can handle scale. Think of Hadoop or cloud-based storage. And the next, after storing the data, you process the data. You clean it, structure it, organize it. Tools like Spark or Kafka help here to be able to do the processing. And after processing the data, companies try to analyze the data. That is where they find patterns, make predictions. This is where you could have your machine learning models and you could do a lot of analysis with your data. And of course, if you analyze data, they try to also do some visualization. Visualization is where you turn all the complexity into some things humans can really understand, like dashboard or a lot. And now you have another component that is the AI training. From voice assistant to generative AI models, and we use big data to train these models. Training this system requires enormous data sets managed by big data systems. The thing with AI is that the better the data, the smarter the AI. That is why you need to have good processing and very good storage of your data to give you a meaningful output. So when Netflix recommends your next show or Google Maps reroute your driver due to traffic, it's not magic. It's a result of the entire pipeline homing in the background. All right, let's get just a little bit nerdy without going full metrics, just to talk about some technical part of the big data. Remember when I told you that traditional tools like Excel can't handle big data? That is in fact true. The reason is because they are designed to open one file at a time on one machine. But big data tools, they work in parallel across hundreds or thousands of machines. Think about Hadoop, for example. Hadoop breaks down data into chunks and spreads them across multiple servers. Then it processes those chunks simultaneously and combines the result, like a group project where everyone actually does their part. Or think about Apache Spark. It's a super fast engine for processing big data in real time. It's what lets ride sharing apps like Uber adjust prices instantly during rush hour. And databases they're not just SQL anymore. You've got no SQL databases like MongoDB for handling unstructured data. And data lakes, which store raw data until someone figures out what to do with it. Even cloud providers like AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud have entire suites just for big data. Let's bring this home with some real tangible examples. First is Spotify. It doesn't just guess your music taste. Spotify analyzes your skips, replays, volume, levels, time of day, and what people with similar tastes are playing. That is big data. It also applies in healthcare. You have wearables like smartwatches that track your heart rate, sleep, steps, and feed data into systems that can detect early signs of illness. You also have this in e-commerce. Amazon uses big data to optimize everything from inventory and pricing to to people also bought suggestions that it gives. You can also have it in smart cities, the traffic lights adjusting in real time, garbage trucks rerouting based on fuel sensors. Big data makes city more efficient. There's a use case in finance, fraud detection systems flag suspicious transactions based on patterns learned from billions of past transactions. Big data is literally shaping the world as we live in it from what we watch to how your daughter makes decisions. But a good question to ask is, is big data always good? Well, the simple answer is not necessarily. Big data brings up some important concerns. The first is privacy. When every click, location, and conversation is data, how much do we really own? Bias. If the data going in is biased, the outcome will be biased as well. This is a big issue in areas like hiring algorithms or policing software. You don't want to get arrested because there was bias in the technology used in arresting you. We also have the problem of overload. Sometimes companies collect data just because they can, not because they should. So why big data is powerful? It's not a silver bullet. It needs to be used ethically, responsibly, and most importantly, transparently. So just to wrap things up here, Next time, when you get a recommended for you notification or your city magically knows where potholes are forming, try to remember that is big data doing its thing. It's not just about giant servers and complicated tools. It's about turning chaos of the world into something we can understand and act on. The real magic isn't in the data itself. 
it's in what we do with it. If this helped you finally make sense of what big data really means, um, drop a like, maybe share it with a friend. And hey, if you want more data content explained like this in human language with zero jargon, you can subscribe and stick around. We've got a lot more coming. Um, thanks for watching and I'm going to see you in the next one. And bye for now.